All right, everybody, this is Ross. Uh, in today's video, I thought I'd give you guys an update on what's going on here with the fig trees on the patio, the container fig trees. And you can see that uh, these are in smaller pots. These are the five gallon size pots that I've pretty much put here in this area for experimentation. This is the experimentation area. The varieties that I'm not too confident in just yet, or maybe I've just acquired them this year rooted them as cutting this year. Um, most, if not all of them, have been rooted either this year or last year. The cuttings that we have rooted last year, we took them out of their, their bigger pots that they were in. I had a, just a really bad method, I think, of growing them last year, and they didn't do all that hot. So what I decided to do was to chop them down to the base, for the most part, and try to rejuvenation prune them. We talked a lot about rejuvenation pruning, and that's just a standard practice that I'm gonna do with all these trees. So the trees that we have just freshly rooted, they're gonna grow out for an entire year, this year. They may even get to uh, five feet tall or so, because some of them look so good. They had such great roots on them coming out of the pots. I was very pleasantly surprised. Uh, but at the beginning of next year, I'm probably gonna rejuvenation prune a lot of them down to a much lower height to get themselves a, a very healthy shoot to work from. And uh, that is just gonna become a standard practice here in my yard, is rejuvenation pruning them so we can get consistent results from these trees, a healthier base to work from. And uh, if you're interested in that technique and wanna know more about it, we have videos on it just called rejuvenation pruning. Um, so some of them have been chopped back to nothing and you may think, wow, they're, they're dormant, but uh, a lot of them are awake and they're just now starting to push new growth after we chop them back. Um, and then again, there's trees that were just freshly rooted and up potted into these five gallon size pots. I have a lot more actually that are coming out from the house that we still have to up pot in here. And I think just overall, this is such a, a lot of varieties to experiment with. And I figure if they are going to be an experiment, keep them in the smaller size because they're easier to work with, easier to manage, and I can easier get rid of them in the smaller size if I don't want them anymore. So um, yeah, that's what we're doing. I could probably do a whole video just on these and talk about what varieties we have here. Maybe I'll do that in the future. but. Um, for now, that's kind of the update here on these. We have some older trees like Baccarinho and uh, GM172 and uh, Raven de Calci and different things that I have not been too keen on and want to downgrade them into an experiment, experimental size. Uh, rather than having them into a 10 or a 15 gallon like they were, I downsized them into a smaller pot. And that's just what this area is again it's for experimentation so um i think there's roughly one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen there is about 60 trees right here and uh, there may be another 15 to 20 when it's all said and done um when i finally just got myself the whole thing completed and all the varieties that i acquired this year there's probably another 20 that we're gonna add. Um, so let me show you guys now the trees that came out of the greenhouse and also the trees that have gotten a more natural wake up process. So this tree here came out from underneath the sunroom, no head start like some of these trees that now have fruits on them that came from the greenhouse. So the greenhouse, they've been growing for quite some time, a lot of heat in there. You can see how tall and vigorous and healthy some of those look. But the trees here that are on the patio that are just now leafing out, they have uh, sort of just broken dormancy or broke dormancy about a month ago when we moved them outside from underneath the sunroom. And some of them look a lot further along than others. And I would say this is probably an average year so far. Some of them have, believe it or not, like three or four new leaves on them per shoot, like the, uh, the Calderwood Unknown right here has got some pretty good shoot growth. 
they're looking healthy, they're looking good. I would say, again, this is an average year for about May 1st, which is today, in the Philadelphia area. This is about what your trees should look like at this point with no head start. This Smith here has got four new leaves, so that's pretty darn good. And um, yeah, there's nothing really to really go over or talk about too much with these. They're kind of just doing their thing, getting along. I'm just mainly showing you guys these for comparison purposes so that you guys can get an idea of where your tree should be at at this time of the season. I think, unfortunately, it was a rather, um, it was a great beginning of April and also the end of March was quite warm. Uh, we had really great temperatures and therefore I thought we were going to have a great season, but a lot of April really cooled down and now it's finally getting to the point where we're actually getting some heat this weekend. Uh, it's looking like we're going to be in the 70s consistently. Um, so that's great news for these fig trees. They really need some help, especially the trees that are just now coming out of the greenhouse. So that's a big issue right now that I'm kind of dealing with and I, I want to talk about right now is some of these trees are really at like sort of an energy deficit and um, what that means is they have a number of fruits on the branches that require a certain amount of energy to be put into those fruits but the number of leaves is not sufficient enough to create the energy produce the energy I should say or transfer the energy into these fruits. So the photosynthesis is lower. I'm, I'm losing some leaves. And the reason for that, there's one reason why I've lost leaves is that we didn't really transition some of them outside the greenhouse slow enough. And there's a whole re bunch of reasons I could really get into that, but I just was not patient enough and I didn't have the foresight to know that some of these just had a much, um, less starting point than some of these other trees. The higher trees, the taller trees, were forming a canopy in the greenhouse and they were getting all the sun and these lower trees that were being shaded weren't. And therefore, they didn't have the same starting point. So when I moved them out of the greenhouse, some of them didn't really like it and especially at the rate that I moved them. I moved them from the greenhouse, then over there by the butterfly bush and then moved them here. And uh, after those two moves, it was enough to get some of them really not looking all that great. Like the Socorro Black is not very happy. This is probably the worst of the bunch. Um, let me get you guys a leaf here that has fallen off because some of the leaves are falling off now. And that's not what we want. We want to have all of our leaves and all of our photosynthesis to help put into the annual shoot growth to get as much fruits as possible and help the tree with the, the energy requirements of these fruits. So it'd be really bad if they fully defoliated, but I think a couple of these trees, like the Del Sinuami Grand, the Socorro Black, and the Ronde Bordeaux, those took probably the most of it. There's a Daloso and a Valle Calda in the greenhouse because I, it was so bad that I took them out a month ago and I just said, it's so bad with the wind and the the uh, the sunlight damage that I have to put them back in there just to try to recover <laughs> and give them some sort of a, a better head start to the season so they're back in there uh, but these are okay it's not like it's the end of the world but it's not ideal and additionally what's happening and why there's sort of a deficit is that they have very limited shoot growth for the year so what has happened in the greenhouse is that there's been so much heat as I said, early April and late March was very warm, uncharacteristically warm. Therefore, they got a lot of heat and it triggered these branches into fruiting. And it triggered them into fruiting so early that they would normally they would grow. Let's say in a normal year, they're going to grow, they're going to put out maybe, you know, 10, 12 inches of growth. And then there's going to be enough heat that comes in, it triggers them into fruiting, and then they're going to fruit and that 10 or 12 inches is going to have fruit on it. Where now they put out maybe six inches of growth or much less inches of growth, 
four inches of growth, two inches of growth, and they have now fruits on them because of all that heat at such an earlier point. So ideally you would have probably let them grow for a bit, had cooler temperatures for a bit, and then triggered them into fruiting. And that would have been the most I ideal scenario. However, there is a nice benefit that they do have some fruits on them, probably at an earlier point. It's just less fruits. So I'm kind of like fighting with the fact that some trees have so much fruit set on them with not a whole lot of leaves. You know, it's kind of at that deficit, as I was saying. So I'm not really liking the job that I did. I could have controlled the heat better in there. I just didn't know how this was gonna work out and have the foresight with the sunlight, the sun damage. Um, you know, it's all my fault. And this is just not as ideal and as perfect as it could have been in other years. It's not a whole loss because what's happening in these low tunnels is incredible. Um, I'm not gonna show you guys the trees in the low tunnels just yet, but they're behind some of these potted trees because the potted trees have been given an earlier start to the season. They were out here a month ago um, and they had been above ground. The low tunnels have only been up for 15 days, but just in these 15 days, I've noticed an extreme difference in these trees and very soon these in-ground trees are going to surpass the potted trees that have received no head start. So uh, it's going to be incredible what the production is going to be like on these. And I'm going to be very happy about that. Um, so, you know, there are some losses here, some things that are not really going all that well, but it's really not all that negative because look at, look at these fruits. You know, this is Del Sinwami Gran here that will ripen quite early for me. This is a variety that normally really doesn't put out a whole lot of fruit. This is called an Noir. It's got a fruit on every node. It's extremely healthy. Excuse the ambulance there, guys. But even has two fruits on one node back here on a tree that almost never fruits that well for me. Victoria is a similar story, and this is a great example of a variety that normally grows and grows and grows, doesn't get the heat requirements, and just grows all season but it's got fruits forming now on every node and that's wonderful. And this is a tree that's a great example of a tree that did really well in the greenhouse because some of them did spectacular and others didn't where I think Victoria just really needs um, a lot more heat earlier in the season. It really benefited from that where it's very vigorous, doesn't have an issue it puts out a lot of growth and then is going to fruit with all the help of the greenhouse, all the heat in the greenhouse. So a total opposite example is my Col de Don Blanc where it's putting out, this is literally like an inch and a half of growth, yet there's all these fruits on it. And it's kind of incredible. The Col de Don Blanc doesn't look all that great, to be honest with you. It's uh, a little bit disease ridden this year. It just needs some help. Um, it's putting out a decent amount of fruits here and there, but overall, really, the production's not all that great. And uh, it, does, it is a very early fruiter, I've realized, with the help of this heat. Oh, there's this branch over here that looks much better, these two branches. And this other side of the tree looks way better. So, yeah, th it's doing much better over there, but parts of the tree don't look too great. And they have very limited, <laughs> as you can see, very limited amounts of growth. Uh, and then others, like I was saying, I've just done phenomenally well. Like Capole Kurt Negra has tons of growth, tons of fruit on it. This tree back here, uh, my Col de Don Blanc, I have a second Col de Don Blanc, is much healthier, doing much better with a lot more fruits on it. And overall, it's just doing way better. This is a Col de Don Roja. Again, similar, I think it's probably the same thing as the Noir. But surprisingly, they have done spectacularly. So it's, again, not an entire loss, but it is what it is. Um, I want to give you guys one more example before I let you guys go. Here is my Sucret. And my Sucret actually put out a few Brabas this year. It did actually as, last year as well. And it put out, uh, I think, four Brabas. I took off two, but even this two Brabas, it, the addition of all that heat, it was limiting the amount of shoot growth therefore limiting 
the amount of fruits I have. Although it's covered in main crop now, the, the shoot growth is very limited. Ooh, excuse me, guys. And therefore, I just have, you know, limited production on these trees because of the Breba, but also the heat. It's really a compounding effect. And we're always trying to get the much, as much growth as we can and then get our fruits to form. So it's all about that energy being put into these new shoots every year. And the last point I want to make is the same thing about another tree of mine, my Petit Albique. And the Petit Albique, if you guys remember in our Breba video, had about 12 to 15 Brabas on it. And that was severely being limited with the annual shoot growth. So uh, because of that Breba load, it's really been a downer on the main crop production. And um, I would have much rather have taken off all the Brabas, had the tree grow at a normal rate, and it would have more main crop on it at this point than Brabas. Yeah, the Brabas would have been earlier. They are of consistent quality, I guess, but the main's definitely better and I would have rather have had more main than Brabus, than f a, li a little bit fewer Brabus. So I think in the future, I'm gonna take off all the Brabus from now on that are in that greenhouse. It's just uh, something that will not do in the greenhouse. But the trees out here that getting a head start, I think I'll also take off the Brabus as well, uh, or not getting a head start. So Brabus for me, I think are done. <laughs> Uh, I'm over them. <laughs> I'm over the whole thing. But um, anyway, guys, I want to thank you here for watching this one, sticking to the end and seeing how everything's doing because uh, it's really just beautiful, at least, to see how everything's growing and how green everything is now on the patio. I was excited just to see that, you know, moving some of the trees outside over here has made everything much brighter and greener and happier uh, for me. So... I've been excited about that, and uh, I hope you guys have a great season. Check out our blog, figboss.com. We'll see everybody soon, all right? Take care. We'll see you guys for tomorrow's video.